Welcome to Open Java. In this lesson, we will finish to create all the entities required for our project. We will learn how to calculate default values, how to make regular references with many to one, and how to create collections of dependent objects. Let's start. Now that we have the basic entities running, it's time to face the core entity of our application. So let's write our invoice entity with year, number, and date. We start with entity. getter and setter. We have an ID, OID string. Let's add ID, generated value, generator system UUID, Hidden generic generator with name again with system UUID strategy UUID. We have experience with this with the previous video and the length of our column. Perfect. Let's add an ear with the length of our column with four. int number column length six and local date for date. This field is required. And the last last one we have uh, a string for remarks. As we said in the previous video, we have the stereotype memo and that's it. It will be nice to have default values for these properties so the user does not have to type them. It's easy to do it using the default value calculator annotation. Here we have default value calculator, current year calculator dot class. And for current date, also default value calculator with current local date calculator dot class. And that's it. But sometimes you need your own logic for uh, calculating the default value. For example, number. In this case, we want to add one to the last invoice number in the same year. So creating your own calculator with your logic is easy. First, create a new package for a calculator. In this dialog, we write the package name that your company that invoicing that calculators and click finish. Now in our new package we create a new class for our calculator. Let's call it next number for year calculator class. Our 
calculator must implement iCalculator interface and therefore must have a calculate method. That's why we press on the add unimplement methods button. Right. Let's add an int here with getter and setter. We declare a year property to put in the year of the calculation. And this value will be injected before calculating. So for the calculate method, let's write query, query type and query name. And we use x persistence dot get manager dot create query. And in our query, we have select max. I that number from invoice I where I that year is year. This query returns the max invoice number of the indicate year. So we have query set parameter. We use the injected year as the parameter for the query. And we declare an integer last number. Query that get single result. And the return if there is no last number, we return one, else we return the last invoice number of the year plus one. Now we only have to annotate the number property in the invoice entity. Here in number, we have default value calculator, value next number for year calculator dot class properties we use the annotation property value and for name we have er as i said before this will inject the value of er from invoice to the calculator before calling to calculate. Let's see how it works. And here it is. Whenever the user clicks on you, the next invoice number is available for the field. Now that we have all the entities ready to use, it's time to add relationships with other entities. We'll begin adding a reference from invoice to customer because an invoice without a customer is not very useful. But before adding a customer, use the invoice model here to remove all the current invoices because we are going to make customer require so the old data could fail. Come back to the invoice entity and let's write. customer, customer with the annotation many to one. Fetch, fetch type lazy. And optional is false, cause I said before, customer is required. Nothing more, let's run our application. Here it is, our invoice with customer. Also, we have some more functionalities to check. 
for example, the user can create new customers from here. Back number, Sean Smith, street, zip code. City, State, California. Create. Also, the magnifying glass is for searching customer. And we can modify the current customer with this pencil. Usually an invoice needs to have a couple of lines with the details of products and quantities. These details are part of the invoice and they are not shared with other invoices. So the way of modeling the invoice details is to use a collection of embeddable objects. To do it with JPA, we are going to declare a regular collection in invoice, annotated with the element collection. Collection detail, details, and the annotation, as we said, element collection. In order to make this collection works, we need to write the detail class. We press here and that's it. In this case, we use the notation embeddable and as usual, getter and setter. We have a quantity and a product with the notation many to one fetch, fetch type lazy. And in this case, it can be optional. Perfect. Now the user can add, edit, and remove elements from the collection. But in this case, we can see that the properties by default in the collection are the plain ones, because the properties of references are not included by default. But we can fix it using the open shower annotation list properties. And we need to add the list of the properties separated by commas. Product that number, product that description, and quantity. The visual result is this one. We choose a client, a product, a quantity, and save. Congratulations! You have finished your domain model classes. Our users can work now with products, categories, customers, and even create invoices. In the next video, we will improve our user interface with OpenShava's annotation. So, see you in lesson 4. Bye!